Welcome back to Whole Future, guys. Wanted to talk today about a very important topic that has been exploding in the health world in the last 10 to 20 years it's called autoimmune disorders. And you may have heard of one. You probably know somebody who has one, and they're... Uh, there are all sorts of them, and so what I just wanted to do today was talk a little bit about how they work and what some of the sort of treatment methods are for them, and we'll look at some of the less effective ones and some of the more effective ones. So basically what an autoimmune disease is, is that your body attacks itself, and that seems pretty self-explanatory from the name, but a lot of people don't understand where these come from, and how they actually work. So the truth is that science doesn't really know the cause in a lot of the cases, but that doesn't mean that we can't figure out a way to combat them. So basically your body creates antibodies, which are what it uses to normally attack invaders, and these antibodies end up attacking the body's own cells. And how this starts we don't really know. We know that sometimes there's a previous infection that goes away, but the body still is creating antibodies to fight that infection or possibly that toxicity or some other foreign agent. And it's still creating those antibodies, and those antibodies happen to be harmful to the system. Now, in some cases, the antibodies don't actually attack the cells. You have something like Graves' disease where the antibodies resemble a hormone called thyrotropin, which actually stimulates the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone, also known as thyroid stimulating hormone. So you get something called LATS, which is like long-acting thyroid stimulator, which is really an antibody that your body's trying to produce, but it's tricking your thyroid gland into going into overdrive. So they get like the bulgy eyes and the increased heart rate, and they can't stand hot weather and things like that, hyperthyroidism. But you can also have a hypothyroid in which the antibodies actually attack your... Um, your thyroid gland, and that's known as Hashimoto's disease. And so we know that there's some sort of toxin that's created. So if you remember uh, immunology, basically an antibody is going to look like a, like a Y-shaped thing, and it's going to latch onto an antigen, which is like a little protrusion on the surface of a cell. Now, almost all cells have little things sticking off of their cell membrane or cell wall, and these are called antigens, and this is how the body recognizes foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses. Well, guess what? All your human cells also have antigens on them. That's like uh, when you come think of your blood type and you have like the A and the B and the RH factor. Those are all antigens that are on your red blood cells. Now, what's crazy is that if you're a blood type A, you have antibodies to blood type B. So if you get a blood transfusion, your blood's basically, your, your syst immune system is going to attack the foreign blood if it's not a blood type match. And that's kind of what's going on in a, an autoimmune disease, that basically some of your cells have antigens that for whatever reason these antibodies think is the enemy. And so we have these genes that predispose us to, um, to autoimmune diseases it's called HLA genes, which stands for human leukocyte antigen. And so something like ankylosing spondylitis is going to be HLA, human leukocyte antigen, B27, or rheumatoid arthritis is HLA, DR4. So the last three letters, are, the, the meaning isn't that important. Just know that many of these autoimmune diseases have their own markers. Um, but the HLA, human leukocyte antigen, so human, we know what that is, leukocyte. That's basically medical speak for white blood cell. And then antigen is like we talked about, the little nub on the outside of the cell that the antibody attacks. And so when you have these genes, you basically create, your cells have an antigen that this particular antibody likes to attack. Now, whether you actually produce antibodies to attack that antigen is the whole name of the game of whether or not you develop the autoimmune condition. So there is a genetic predisposition, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you will get the disease. So there is some sort of foreign agent, some sort of toxicity, some, whether it's a bacteria, virus, chemical, fungus, some sort of foreign agent, parasite, that comes along that your body tries to make antibodies against, and in sort of a collateral damage, friendly fire kind of way, it attacks that foreign agent, 
and it also attacks you. So, the common medical approach is to basically suppress the immune system. Go, oh, the immune system's acting up and it's attacking the body, so we better, like, it's trying to send a signal, we better tell it to shut up. So, we create things like, we have things like corticosteroids, which mimic the hormone uh, cortisol, which basically suppresses the immune response, so reduces inflammation. This helps with the symptoms, but it doesn't treat the root cause. We have all sorts of ways to treat the root cause. If your thyroid's not working, we'll create a synthetic thyroid hormone to basically do its job for you as your body continues to kill its own thyroid. So, the health model takes a different approach. And it basically says, you know, the things that you do, the substances, forces, influences, and conditions that make you well are the same ones that keep you well, and they're also the same ones that will make you well if you're sick. Whereas medicine likes to say, well, if you're, if you're sick, take drugs. But if you're well, don't take drugs. There's a war against drugs. The health model looks at basically removing the cause. We don't really know the cause for sure, but what we do know is how to detoxify the body and remove foreign invaders that could be causing the immune system to flare up. And the best possible way, the best possible way that we could do this is through a health-promoting diet. That is, and then there's different levels of this, and basically the better you want to feel, the deeper you can dive. But at a surface level, like the most important thing you can do is get rid of processed foods. Anything that comes in a package, anything that you got a microwave, anything that's got food additives. Listen, if there's something like red number 40 in there, you better believe, if you can't read what the ingredient is, you better believe that your body has no idea what it is and it's going to try to attack it. And guess what? <laughs> your thyroid gland, your pancreas, your uh, neuromuscular junction, whatever part of you that the, immune, the autoimmune disease is attacking could be the collateral damage there. So anything chemicalized, get rid of it. Organic is great. And we're just going to kind of dive down here. I think the optimal diet is basically one entirely of organic fresh fruits and vegetables. That is going to guarantee these things are like 100% no problems. There are no toxic compounds. There's nothing your body doesn't recognize. Now, as soon as you get into things like um, animal products, dairy products, you're going to have an immune response. If you look at people's white blood cell count before and after eating animal products, it skyrockets through the roof. People who don't eat animal products, people who eat a lot of raw foods, a lot of Oh, I gotta take this, guys. Ugh, normally don't like to edit these videos, but I had to take a phone call, but I was really in the zone. Anyway, a lot of foods you'll actually see an immune response when you eat them. People who eat a plant-based diet, people who eat a raw plant-based diet will have a lower white blood cell count than people who do not. And this is because the immune system is not having to attack what it views as foreign invaders. Now, the body is extremely resilient, extremely resilient, and it can handle all kinds of garbage that people throw at us. Um, it can handle, you know, McDonald's and all these things, and it, it, it does its best to survive, but it really all it can do is get by. And so in the presence of all this toxicity, it fights it all off, it sends it to the liver to be stored, it really wants to get rid of it, but it can only handle so much at a time, and eventually it becomes saturated with toxicity, and that's when we start to get really sick. And so whatever you can do to bring down your toxic load, as much fruits and vegetables as possible, as little processed food as possible, as little animal products as possible. I recommend going on a whole food plant-based diet that is basically fruits, vegetables, uh, whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds. And I think the optimum thing you can do is go on a raw food plant-based diet, which is fresh fruits and vegetables to the exclusion of everything else. That's what I do. I personally recommend that. I know that's a difficult option for people, but I think that if you're really suffering and you're really sick, that is going to get you the best results. Now, one more thing I want to add, one thing that's also very therapeutic is water-only fasting, where basically you do a medically supervised fast, where you are resting and you are ingesting only water for a prescribed period of time. And the body, basically, it's like hitting the reset button on the Nintendo. The body flushes all the toxins out. Now that it has to no longer eat food for a certain amount of time, it can just work on detoxifying. And people have all these crazy um, 
chronic healing crisis where mucus will come out their nose, it'll come out all kinds of orifices. The body just gets rid of it the best way that it can, the way that it knows how. It's infinitely more intelligent than us, and we take away all stimuli, all toxicity, and it sort of in its own infinite wisdom chooses the best route to um, expunge the offending whatever it may be. We don't really need to know what it is. We sometimes can't even figure it out, but we know that we do a water fast for sometimes three to four weeks, maybe more, and we follow up by putting the person on a health-promoting diet like I explained. The autoimmune disease essentially remits, and if they went back to their old lifestyle, it would probably come back, but most patients feel so good doing that, they don't. And also the fast helps cleanse the palate, so it becomes much easier to transition to this new diet. You enjoy all the food. You don't want to go back to eating Snicker, Snickers bars and barbecue and stuff like that. So that is basically my take on autoimmune diseases. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Share this video. Please share this video with anybody you know who may be um, suffering from an autoimmune condition and educate them. I'm going to put some links below where they can go for more information. And uh, as always, you can also check me out on uh, Instagram and Facebook as Whole Future as well. I really hope you enjoy this video, guys. I'll talk to you soon.